The Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from the Marine base at Camp Pendleton, California, and starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Hey, friends, ever notice how your grocer smiles as he hands you a big 12-ounce economy size package of delicious, toasty brown grape nuts flakes? That's because grand-tasting, nourishing grape nuts flakes are not rations. You can have all you want. And then you feel pleased as you carry your grape nuts flakes home, thinking of all the marvelous whole grain nourishment your folks will get in each crisp, tempting bowl full. The same way your husband will feel when he samples the amazing goodness of grape nuts flakes. A sweet as a nut, malty richness that's wide awake, lip smacking, swell. Yes, grape nuts flakes bring you more smiles per mouthful. So, for a round of smiles at your home tomorrow, make it grape nuts flakes all around the table. night played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Marine base at Camp Pendleton, California, we bring you our two-fisted master of ceremonies. Well. <laughs> a man who has been known to chin himself ten times before he could pull down the handle on a slot machine, <laughs> Jack Benny. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, who never played a slot machine in his life, talking. And Don, Don, I may be a little flabby now, but when I was the age of these boys in our audience, I was as tough and physically fit as any one of them. Why, when I was 17 years old, I worked a whole summer at a lumber camp in the North Woods. A lumber camp in the North Woods? Were you a lumberjack jerk? <laughs> Uh, what? I said, were you a lumberjack jerk? <laughs> a, lum a lumberjack jerk? Well, I can't say, were you a lumberjack jack? It doesn't sound right. <laughs> All right, then why don't you say, was I a lumberjerk jack? <laughs> but jerk, there's no such thing as a lumberjerk. Look, Don, let's start over. When I was 17 years old, I worked in a lumber camp in the North Woods. Were you a lumberjack, John? John, that's better. No, no, that's, that's better. No, 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 Don, I wasn't. Well, were you a stripper, a man who hews the bark from the mighty monarchs of the forest? No, 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 I wasn't, Don. Well, uh, did you ride the logs down the river and break up jams by sheer brute strength? No, 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 I didn't, Don. Huh? No, no. Well, uh, what was your job in the camp? I used to go around with a needle and remove slivers from the lumberjack's finger. <laughs> oh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'd be exhausted, you know? Exhausted from removing slivers? Well, that wasn't the only job I had, Don. I was also a BBR. What's that? A baby bird remover. You see, you see, before any tree could be cut down, I had to climb up in the branches and remove all the little baby birds from the nest. Oh, I see. Then you'd climb back down the tree with the birds in your arms. No, no, I didn't carry them in my arms. You see, Don, just as I got up to the nest, I'd whistle like a mother robin, and all the little birds would jump into the can of worms which I had tied on top of my head. <laughs> I'll never forget the day I was attacked by an infuriated woodpecker. A woodpecker? Was she mad? I think so. She tapped out, I hate you, in Morse code on the back of my neck. <laughs> and they have sharp beaks. Oh, hello, Mary. Hi, Jack. Don, what are you shooting the breeze about? <laughs> uh, 
suit and a breeze. Well, Mary, I see you've, uh, you're using some marine slang. Where'd you pick it up? Well, I met a couple of Liberty Hounds who were on the beach at Oceanside. <laughs> Uh, at Oceanside last night, and we all went to a restaurant for a cup of joe with sidearms. <laughs> oh, I get it. Uh, you met a couple of Marines on leave and had coffee with them. You know, that lingo is nothing new to me. I used to talk like that when I was a Marine during the First World War. Oh, pardon me, Jack, but weren't you a sailor during the World War? Oh, oh, yes, yes. He was a Marine during the Spanish-American War. <laughs> Mary, Mary, it so happens that during the Spanish-American War, I was just a bashful kid hiding behind my mother's apron. But they came and got you, and in you went. <laughs> that you're making up, you know. But while we're on the subject of Marines, Mary, let me tell you something. If I wasn't two years over the age limit, I'd join tomorrow. <laughs> of course, seven weeks in boot camp might be a little tough on me. Seven weeks? Yeah. Seven minutes in boot camp and you'd die with your boots on. Oh, I could stand it. Say, any man who has spent as much time as I have in the lumber camps in the North Woods has got to be tough. Oh, go sit in a bird's nest. <laughs> I didn't sit in a bird's nest. I rescued the egg. Well, if it isn't the knucklehead kid. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. What's all the chin music about? Chin music? Where'd you get hold of that marine lingo, Dennis? I know all of it. You do? Yeah, get this. Last night I bumped into a couple of Liberty Hounds on the beach at Oceanside, and we bought a bottle of red lead and got cockeyed. <laughs> Dennis, uh, Dennis, red lead happens to be ketchup. Now, how could you get cockeyed on ketchup? I'm about the only guy I know that can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, what, what an imagination. I get a bang out of mustard, too, but it's habit for me. <laughs> but it's what, Dennis? It's habit for me. Oh, oh. Well, Dennis, before you go on another binge, how about singing a song for the boys? Okay, but I didn't get a chance to rehearse this morning. The orchestra didn't show up. Oh, so the orchestra didn't show up. Where's that Phil Harris? Oh, Phil, were you calling me, you D.I. headache? <laughs> That I don't see here at all. Huh? Yes, come on over here, Phil. Come on. <laughs> Say, Phil, uh, Dennis tells me that you and your orchestra boy didn't show up for rehearsal this morning. Is that right? Yes, sir. Like Paul Revere said at Bunker Hill, I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> Phil, Paul Revere didn't say that. It was George Washington. Well, you used to knock around with them guys. I got to read about them. <laughs> Phil, look, don't evade the issue. Why didn't you and your boy show up for rehearsal this morning? We didn't hear the bugle. Now cut that out. <laughs> I want the truth. Well, it's like this, Jackson. Me and the boys went down to Tijuana last night on a goodwill mission. <laughs> I see. Continue. Well, it was pretty hot down there, and some of the boys got thirsty. So I said, well, let's go in this drugstore here and get a tall, refreshing glass of water. Uh-huh. So I speak a little Spanish myself, you know? So I says to the guy, I said, give us all a glass of tequila. <laughs> That's water, you know, bon aqua. <laughs> water, Phil, for your information, tequila is an intoxicating beverage. Well, bless my soul. <laughs> Now, Phil, what happened after you drank that tequila? Well, let's see. You know, it's hard to patch this stuff together, Jackson. <laughs> well, concentrate, concentrate. What happened? Well, now, let me see. Now, after we left the drugstore, we followed a beautiful Mexican dame to her home, and I sang some songs under her balcony. Well, did you ever get smacked right in a kisser with a tamale? <laughs> No, but so much for romance south of the border. <laughs> well, let's have your song, Dennis. Oh, by the way, kid, I saw that uh, Dennis, 
I saw that movie you just made, Powers Girl, and you were swell. I watched you all through the picture. Thank you. Well, that's Benny for you. A picture full of beautiful models, and he can't take his eyes off the tenor. <laughs> Quiet. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. <laughs> had sent him a letter and his sister sent a sweater but he wanted something much better this boy was sailing away for his buddies were there with their sweethearts all around him with their sweethearts now he'd never had a Sweetheart, so over and over he sang in my arms, in my arms, and I'm never gonna get a girl in my arms, in my arms, in my arms, and I'm never gonna get a bundle of charms. Comes the dawn, I'll be gone I just gotta have a honey holding me tight You can keep your knitting and your purling If I'm gonna go to Berlin Give me a girl in my arms tonight In my arms, in my arms Ain't I never gonna get a girl in my arms In my arms, in my arms and I'm never gonna get a bundle of charm. Comes the dawn, I'll be gone. And I thank you for the many letters you'll write. As for something nice and cute and female, I'll never find her in the female. Give me a girl in my arms tonight. Comes the dawn, I'll be gone. And though every little parting gift suits me right, Thank you very kindly, Mr. Benny, but you can keep your lucky penny. Give me a girl in my arms tonight. Give me a girl in my arms In My Arms, sung by Dennis Day and Very Good Dennis. I'm sure all the Marines here enjoyed it very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, by the way, Jack, as long as we're here at Camp Pendleton, I have a story I'd like to tell you about a young man who wanted to join the Marines. Is it a true story, Don? I mean, uh, is it believable? Oh, oh, yes. It happened to a friend of mine, Homer B. Leavable. Oh. (laughs) Oh, I mean, hmm. I say, well, uh, tell us the story, Don. Well, Mr. Leavable was a young man, 17 years of age, who wanted to join the Marines. Oh. So, one morning, Homer went to a Marine recruiting station and, to his dismay, found that he was 12 ounces underweight. So he was rejected. 12 ounces underweight? Too bad. However, Homer was undaunted. He went home, rushed into the kitchen, and ate a whole 12-ounce economy-sized package of toasty brown sweet as a nut grape nut flakes. Paper and all? No, no, he put them in a bowl. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I mean, hmm, go ahead. Well, that very same day, he went back to the recruiting office, and the doctor said, congratulations, young man, you've made the weight. And he got in the Marines? No, the added weight gave him flat feet. (laughs) Well, that was tough luck. (laughs) Very good, Don. And now, ladies and gentlemen, say, Mary, do you think that was a true story? Sure, lots of people have flat feet. Look at yours. Mary, I haven't got flat feet. Go on, your footprints in the sand have fooled many a duck hunter. (laughs) There's very little buckshot in my bathing suit, Miss Livingston. It was those water wings that fooled them. Nah. (laughs) And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are offering a very unusual play. About 200 years ago, on the very side of this marine base, Camp Pendleton, 
there was a great Mexican ranch known as the Rancho Santa Margarita. So this evening, we would like to show you what life was like on a typical rancho in those early days. In other words, our sketch will take you back 200 years. And don't think we haven't got the jokes for it. <laughs> You're crabbing everything. Oh. Inasmuch, inasmuch as I am the only member, Chuck Reisner won't like it, inasmuch as I am the only member of our cast who speaks Spanish, I will play the part of a wealthy landowner, Don Jose Benet. I speak Spanish, Mr. Benny. You do? Now, the part of my daughter... <laughs> yes, sir. Now, the part... The part of my... The part of my daughter... Uh, what did Dennis say to you, Jack? What's he talking about? I don't know. But you said you spoke Spanish. I speak it, but I don't understand it. <laughs> now, the, um... The part of my daughter... Bueno, señor Benny, diga usted algo, estoy ansioso... Bonus notches, Dennis, bonus notches. <laughs> now, the part of my daughter... I can't speak Spanish, eh? Now, the part of my daughter, Conchita Rosita Margarita Pepita Benet, will be played by Mary Livingston. Phil Harris will be a Yankee salesman, and Don... Yes, Jack? To make the rancho authentic, you're playing the part of a herd of cattle. <laughs> So, uh, pin these 500 tails on your pants and let's get going. Huh? <laughs> now, this play will be presented immediately after a band number by Phil Harris. How about it, Phil? Well, I'd like to, Jackson, but we didn't have no chance to rehearse and it'll sound ragged. What? You know, it won't be my usual smooth, dreamy style. Dreamy? Phil, just because people close their eyes when they hear you play, don't let it go to your head. <laughs> now, let's have it. Wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Now listen, Rochester, when you left Los Angeles last night, I told you to be here for the program today. Now, where are you? Well, a friend of mine offered to drive me to Camp Pendleton, but on the way down, we got a flat tire. I see. Between Los Angeles and Camp Pendleton, you had a flat tire. Where are you calling from? Tijuana. Uh, Tijuana? Tijuana, come down here or shall I come up there? Now you come up here. Now let me ask you something, Rochester. In driving from Los Angeles to Camp Pendleton, how could you possibly get to Tijuana, which is 50 miles south of here? Well... Well what? Well, boss. Well, boss what? Are you well, boss? Yes, I'm well! <laughs> <laughs> now, Rochester, I want the truth. You went down to Tijuana for a good time, didn't you? Oh, no, boss. All I had since I've been here is a couple of glasses of buttermilk. <laughs> Buttermilk, eh? Are you sure that wasn't tequila you drank? It could be. My cigars lit it both in. <laughs> I thought so. Now, listen, Rochester, I want you to get right over here to Camp Pendle, and I promise these boys you'll do a song for them. Okay, I'll be there. Good. Did you bring your music with you? It's right on my hip, boss. I wrapped a bottle of buttermilk in it. <laughs> well, see you later. Goodbye. Don't worry, fellas. He'll be here, and I'll have him do a song for you. Gosh, if he's in Tijuana now, he can't possibly get here in time for the program. This is radio, kid. Wake up. Bonehead notches. Play for him.
Driving Me Crazy, played by Phil Harris in the orchestra. Now for our play about life on the ranch show 200 years ago. I remember, Mary, you're going to be my daughter. Phil, you're the Yankee salesman. And Don, you're a herd of cattle. How many heads? Just one head, Don. Like, like I told you, 500 tails. <laughs> All right, let's get going. What about me, Mr. Benny? Am I going to be in the play? Oh, yes, yes. Pardon me, kid. Uh, Dennis, you're going to be my daughter's sweetheart, Don Deniso Dopo. <laughs> so here we go to the Rancho Benet. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Ah, Don Jose Binet, I am one lucky man. I have beautiful daughter, I have beautiful rancho, and 500 head of beautiful cattle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are so big, so fat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I will send them to market soon. No! No! Okay, I wait. <laughs> Ah, here come my little daughter, Conchita, Rosita, Maquita, Pepita, Lolita, Juanita, Binet. Ah, my papa, Don Jose Benet, with a lousy toupee. <laughs> hmm. Conchita, my darling, I have good news for you. Tomorrow you marry Don Des- Deniso Dopo, <laughs> big tortilla man from Tijuana. But I have never seen this Don Dopo. He's a stranger to me. After the wedding, you will get acquainted. <laughs> Don Deniso Dopo make fine husband, Conchita. Marry him, and you will have five, maybe ten, maybe fifteen children. Boys or girls? Mix them up! Mix them up! <laughs> Mix them up, that's all. <laughs> then it is settled. <laughs> ah, here comes Don Dopo from the depot. Ah, he stopped quick. Come in. Ah, Don Dopo, did you have nice treat? Si, si. <laughs> Come here, Don Dopo. I would like to present to you to my daughter, Conchita, Rosita, Maquita, Pepita, Lolita, Juanita, Patuta, Patita, Patuta, Benay. <laughs> you like her, yes? Oh, <laughs> yes, vea. Es por un día de momento de tenerla en mis brazos. <laughs> Uh, you understand what he say, Conchita? Only the whistle. <laughs> I must talk with Don Dopo alone, Conchita. So go in kitchen and put kettle on. But I'm already wearing sombrero. Put kettle on stove, not on hair. <laughs> now, Scrammo. Oh, you mean I should take the powder? Yes. Now, Don Dopo, we talk business. If you marry my daughter, I give you 50 cow. Only 50 cow. If I marry Don Pedro Alvarez's daughter, he give me 50 cow and throw in the bull. <laughs> but I, I am not throwing the bull. I really give you 50 cow. <laughs> you will marry Conchita, Rosita, Maquita, Pepita, Lolita, Juanita, Benita, Benet. Tomorrow. And your brother Pancho, he will be best man. But my brother Pancho is dead. He was killed by a weasel. How could a man be killed by a little weasel? He was standing on the track. The train came along and he did not hear the weasel. (laughs) (laughs) That, That is one big joke. I am laughing. Even Pancho went to pieces. Anyway, it is settled. You will marry my daughter tomorrow. Now, if you will help me, I will call her in. Oh, Conchita, Rosita, Marquita, Pepita, Lolita, take it. Juanita, Anita, Francita, Galita, take it. Sosalita, Belita, Benet. Will you come in here, please? Were you all calling me all? (laughs) We're south of the borders, huh? It is settled, my daughter. Tomorrow we will have wedding, and you will marry Don Dopo. But I do not love these Dopo. I love Gringo. What gringo? Feel with the curly Harris. <laughs> ah, Phil Harris. Last week he mixed up program with Ad Lieb. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who is this gringo? I will kill him. 
Be careful, Don Dopo. Phil Harris is one tough hombre. He is big man. I got no care for him. I no care if he is twice my big and three times my heavy. I kill him. <laughs> Must be same horse. <laughs> he is coming into the house. Don Dopo, what are you doing with that knife? I got hang nail. <laughs> Come in. Ah, oh, my love there, my sweetheart. Ah, oh, Conchita, Rosita, Marquita, Pepita, Lolita, Juanita, Anita, Benita, Francita, Carlita, Belita, Margarita, Bene, I love you. Who do you love? I'm not going through that again, sister. <laughs> Now listen to me, gringo. I do not care how much you love my daughter. I have promised her to Don Do. And don't forget those 50 cows. You will get them. But, Papa, I love Americano. I do not care. Listen, gringo. I give you just three to leave this rancher. You got feel he's got a gun. You're on my side. <laughs> All right, gringo. I am going to count three, and if you do not leave, I will shoot. Uno. Dos. Darn it, I forgot the Spanish word for three. <laughs> I don't care, I shoot you anyway. Miss me. Then I will shoot Don Dopo. He's closer. Miss me too. Well, I know one thing I cannot miss. Mm. Mm. Well, see, Don, everybody, we will have steak for dinner. <laughs> and now, fellas... And now, fellas, here's Rochester all ready to sing Taking a Chance on Love from a zoo picture, Cabin in the Sky. Here I go again. I hear those trumpets blow again. All the blow again. Taking a chance on love. Here I slide again. About to take that ride again. Starry-eyed again. Taking a chance on love. Thought the cards were a frame of I never would try But now I'm taking the game of And the eight of hearts and ties On the ball again I'm riding for a ball again I'm gonna give my all again Taking a chance on love Waiting in again I'm leading with my chin again I'm starting out to win again Taking a chance on love Ladies and gentlemen, the United States has a job to do. We're marching together to win a bitter struggle. And to win this war, the United States of America, that means you and me and everybody in this nation, must be strong, clear-headed, wide awake, healthy. That is why our government is spending so much time and money and effort to see that every American eats to win so that he can work to win this war. We must all get a nourishing, well-balanced diet. Therefore, our government urges us to eat the basic seven foods every day, as outlined in Uncle Sam's nutrition program. We're proud that cereals, whole grain or restored, are one of the seven basic foods. We're proud that delicious, unrationed Grape Nuts Flakes is a whole grain cereal member of the basic seven. And we're proud to cooperate in urging our fellow Americans to start tomorrow with this firm resolve, every day from now on, I'll eat the basic seven. Next week, Gardner Field, California. Good night, folks. Since the Marine Corps does not endorse any product, this broadcast is not intended as an endorsement of our product by the Marine Corps.